Hello and welcome to another episode of The Han on Fire, brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. I'm your host, Tim Davis. The Han on Fire is a podcast and YouTube channel featuring education, commentary, and conversation with world-renowned fire forensic scientist, Dr. John DeHaan. If you have any questions for Dr. DeHaan, please email them to questions at thehaanonfire.com. The widely accepted method of fire investigation is the scientific method of fire investigation. And this week, I asked Dr. DeHaan what that is. DeHaan on Fire contains discussion and video not suitable for all audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Dr. DeHaan, what is meant by the scientific method of fire investigation? Well, that's a inter- kind, of, kind of complicated um, history there. Um, I just observed, can't say celebrate, I just observed my 50th anniversary uh, as a forensic scientist, criminalist, and even from the start, I was involved in fire investigation from the scientific uh, side of things, the ev- physical evidence and its analysis and interpretation. And uh, so I was quickly involved with uh, scene investigations and things like that um, done by a variety of agencies. And the curious thing was that a lot of the investigations were, were based on mythology and what the previous person in that uh, job had taught the new person coming in. And sometimes that was reliable and often it wasn't. And there was a lot of mythology that was kind of handed down from generation to generation. And when I first got into it as a scientist and I'd ask an investigator, why did you pick that place as your point of origin? And they'd come up with some reason. I'd go, well, that's not the way the physics of heat transfer and things like that work. What's, what's going on? And, um, realized that a lot of the investigative techniques or interpretation guidelines, I should say, uh, really weren't based on a scientific analysis of the fire and heat transfer processes. Um, And so I did my best on a scene by scene, report by report uh, basis to to correct the thing, the investigators that I work with and get them on the right path. In 1980, I was invited to rewrite uh, Paul Kirk's kind of historic book on fire investigation. And Professor Kirk was a professor of criminalistics uh, in microchemistry at uh, University of California at Berkeley. And he had a private practice as a forensic scientist and did a lot of fire and explosion stuff. So uh, um, he was very well qualified to write this book. It was the first book actually written by a scientist Uh, involving fire investigation and scene investigation and interpretation and things like that. But um, it was largely dismissed by many of the people in the fire investigation community because it was written by, you know, a lab person uh, on the, on the West coast. And so when his information or interpretation went contrary to what was commonly involved, they just kind of wrote it off and said, well, that's just him. Well, when I took it over in 1980, I rewrote the entire book, but following more clo- much more closely the uh, scientific aspects of, of proper investigation and interpretation. And what was interesting was that I realized that if I emphasized the word science or scientific method of investigation, I would be canceling out the interests of a lot of the people involved in fire investigation. So I... I uh, deliberately chose the term the analytical method because every time the s- subject of science or scientists in, uh, came up, people would envision people in lab coats with clipboards and things like that. And that's not the role I anticipated for science, especially, or scientific uh, contributions. So I, I used the analytical method <laughs> all through um, <clears throat> uh, Kirk's very, uh, first edition, uh, the first couple of editions. Um, because I knew as soon as I men- mentioned the dreaded S word, science, people would, readers would, you know, turn off and just close the book. So um, we, we pursued that. And it was it basically the scientific method is applying um, an analytical scheme of both data collection and data analysis and conclusion uh, formation. And uh, much like a scientist would, would look at a problem and say, gee, I wonder if, or I wonder, you know, how this happens. 
and then do a series of experiments uh, or collect additional data as seeing if that hypothesis was correct or not. And ultimately publishing or presenting the results of, of that uh, inquiry. Well, fire investigation is sort of like that, that you have a problem that you'd like to be able to solve, but it, it, it's on several different fronts. Not only what caused the fire, but you know when did it happen? How did it happen? Who else was present and things like that. So there's a lot of other factors that, that come to play. And the investigator, a good investigator, has to be sure that they're collecting all of the appropriate data, not just walk, walking through a scene and uh, taking some pictures and talking to the first in firefighters and you know that's the that's the end of the investigation no that's a very incomplete investigation thanks for watching another episode of the han on fire brought to you by firewise learning academy if you have any questions for dr dahan please email them to questions at the han on fire and if you haven't subscribed to the if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do so Ring the bell to get notifications of new uploads to the channel, and don't forget to set your devices to receive those updates. For now, signing off for Firewise Learning Academy and Dahan on Fire, I'm your host, Tim Davis. See you next time.